I don't think that there has been any pushback as of yet. We're very new in it, but I, I do think uh, any guidance that you can give to anyone in a new initiative or endeavor, again, it's this, um, we talked a little bit about risk. I've always framed this in, it, it, it's, it's difficult to come to a new um, initiative or a new idea and saying that I, I don't know about this. Um, and to be open to that um, and to be vulnerable, I think is you know, kind of very risky for, for some people. Some of the obstacles in getting buy-in for, uh, for course uh, reviews uh, is the time it takes and um, the commitment. Uh, but I think underneath it all is, uh, at least at the faculty level, is uh, the vulnerability that faculty know that they are um, making themselves uh, quite vulnerable in engaging in a process whereby they'll be criticized. The comments made in a course review need to be constructive, not critical. Most of the time they take that really well. Sometimes they do not, <laughs> especially if it's a legacy course, then <laughs> then you're like, okay. We can't pretend that collegiality means that faculty won't be sentimental about, their, uh, about what they've created. Just like any other creative spirit, it hurts to be criticized. And so, and it's not as productive as offering solutions to a perceived problem or issue in a course. If we get a legacy course, then I usually hand that off to somebody who's a little bit above all of us so that we don't have to handle that because it's peer to peer. I'm not their boss, I'm their peer. This is, and, and their dean is the one who says, it's time for you to get your course reviewed. There's gonna be some group of faculty who are really not gonna to wanna to do this. So why engage it? You know, do it, do it in the departments, get, get those moving forward, get good results, get good improvements, and then move on to the ones that are a little more recalcitrant. Many times uh, faculty and, uh, and administrative staff uh, think that uh, there will be some kind of punitive action uh, uh, associated with a poor, let's say, a, a, a course that, um, that needs a lot of improvement. And so that's a logical assumption, but it's not the case. They feel much more comfortable if they realize this is about design. It's not about your teaching strategies or about your abilities or your depth of knowledge or anything like that. And we, we say that right up front. They don't look at teaching quality. So, so part of that um, orientation for faculty in regard to course reviews has to be about the parameters of that review and what that, re what that review does not evaluate. We're looking at just course design and the standards are based on best practices, evidence-based research, and so they feel more comfortable, I think the instructors do, when they realize no one's scrutinizing my teaching ability. We put forth uh, considerable effort in um, squelching that idea, but also um, assuring faculty that uh, there is a closed communication loop around course reviews, that the faculty has total control over who will see the course reviews, over who will be notified about them. And in Open SUNY, what we encourage is recognition uh, positive recognition, regardless of the outcome of the review, uh, of faculty for um, putting their course out there, uh, being uh, willing to have a, a, their own course reviewed, um, and putting forth the effort in itself. Because um, a course review for a reviewer takes anywhere from eight to 10 hours. We do tell most of the faculty that you can't make all of these changes at the same time. It's it'll be impossible for that to happen. But if you can just do these three things that will really help your student be able to navigate your course better, then that will be helpful. And then maybe in another semester do these three things. So we try and give them a timeline 
of how you adjust to things. And we just need to make it easier for them to invest that time because I don't think it's fair to them to ask them to try to do something that's overly complex when this, the, they're, re, they're honestly not getting evaluated on that for their promotion and tenure. So I, I love that when they care, but I know that, that their caring in that time is um, at the expense of what really not so much matters, but um, matters for them to stay employed. Say your MBA program is going through accreditation review. They, with their specialized accreditation, can use this and this process as a part of what they do with it. The idea that we have evidence-based backup for what we're saying is really important because teachers will, they, they do pay attention to that. It's like, oh, there was a study that showed that? Oh, okay, that's, that's good to know. Many of the faculty want to publish the research that you're doing with um, the efforts you're making. So if you can collaborate with them to engage in the process as part of a research project moving forward, um, that might be a way to connect with them. I think it's also important to keep them engaged when you're doing the reporting because you know what, what you don't want to have happen is to have it come across that it's the perspective of the instructional designers versus the perspective of the faculty in the report. So you got to make sure that you're writing the document from the perspective of the faculty and how they're engaging the problems that have been identified. You know, you don't want to say things like, you know, our courses show X amount of participation without asking the faculty, well, what amount of participation do you think is appropriate? You know, what style of questioning in your discussion questions are appropriate? So there's system-wide buy-in in that all campuses need to show evidence of uh, continuous improvement efforts uh, on the part of particular programs. The review process in general is written into our distance learning policy. So um, people who come to teach online are trained and they know they sign an agreement that they will have their course reviewed. It's easier to influence incoming faculty and uh, so as faculty come in they are required to do some training before they can teach online. We had found that our instructors really didn't know how to teach online, so we developed a teaching online certification program, and our, um, it's an, they apply to be part of that. We have about 75 instructors um, throughout the year. We split it in the fall and the spring. And part of that program is that the course that they build as part of the program gets reviewed um, using the Oscar rubric. The policy was um, uh, written by um, an online learning committee. So it was myself, a uh, director of online learning, and we had a faculty representative from every department on campus who had input. And we went back and forth a few times to make sure we listened to all the stakeholders, to listen to what online faculty had to say. And we drafted um, a recommendation to the provost office, and he, re uh, he proposed that to the academic leadership, and they approved it. We have the backing of our faculty union, because this was a policy that was developed and approved at all levels of governance. And we have the backing of uh, the vice president for academics, who will and can intervene if there's an issue. But we haven't really had any issues. People seem, they know it's a new mode of teaching and they seem very willing to accept any assistance and suggestions that they can get. So it's been really good. Most of our first online faculty were also um, leadership members of our faculty union. So there was never that tension between the union saying, no, you can't do that, and um, faculty wanting to do things. A way to get faculty engaged in the process is to bring them in at the beginning. They should be part of the selection process for whatever quality approach you're going to use. Um, because I think you need their buy-in right at the beginning. If they don't like the questions, uh, if they don't like the approach, and you bring in a fairly structured approach without their engagement, 
um, they're unlikely to see the value or they're, they're uh, you know, faculty are researchers. They're going to criticize the instrument. They're going to, you know, that's part of what faculty do is criticize um, whatever research approach you're using. So why not bring them in early, get them to tell you, yes, I like this approach better than this approach. I would find these results more valuable. It's really difficult after the fact, you know, the genie's out of the bottle and People are teaching online, and you don't you don't have a policy, and now you're going to write policy. Um, so it's very difficult, and I sympathize with campuses who have had that happen. We started with a policy. We had three courses online, and that was it. And our um, our CIO, who was also the director of the library, and um, and me, uh, we sat down and crafted a policy based on things we had seen out there in the world. This was in 2000, 2001. And um, things that made sense for our campus were a very small campus. And so the policy ca almost came first. We did not do any kind of incentivization. Um, I guess the incentive was that you had to do it because it was a policy passed by the academic leadership at the school. But the faculty could decide too. You know, they could just still meet with me and go through the motions of yes, I reviewed it, here's my recommendations. Uh, oh, Ian, these are your recommendations, I love them, great, great ideas, but there was no kind of incentive where they had to implement the, the, the changes. I guess it was just the idea of having the conversation, I guess, and maybe starting the conversation of sharing the information, sharing the knowledge, and sharing the idea of what a quality, high quality online course looks like. Open SUNY has not been able to incentivize course reviews um, as we had hoped we would be able to. So um, what we do, again, is we will provide a letter of recognition for any faculty member or any course reviewer, uh, recognizing the amount of time uh, it takes to do a course review. And uh, again, for any faculty member who puts his or her course up for review, uh, we also recommend that that be recognized as well. It is definitely a soft incentive. Um, and I myself as a faculty member, um, from that perspective, would uh, much prefer a financial incentive um, as we see elsewhere in uh, other workplaces. There was some monetary incentivization, um, but I'll, uh I, I think it was less, there was that piece, but I also think it was a question of, are you interested in this? Is this something that you would want to do um, in future? And for me, it was something I was very interested in because it seems like it's a, a growing direction. We do pay them to go through the teaching online certification program. And we found out the first uh, year that we used Oscar, that if you just tell them um, what is good, um, but you don't, you're not like you have to do this. They, they didn't fix it. So now we're like, here are the things that you have to do in your course um, in order to complete the program and receive payment. The one area where I am uh, looking to make it somewhat mandatory, so to speak, uh, we offer um, development stipends for uh, people who want to design courses uh, for either the, the uh, summer or winter sessions. And uh, I can write language into the contract that says if you accept the stipend, you know, you will go through this process. I do like the idea of, of incentivizing that. So if you're really pushing hard for higher quality, for improvements across the board, I mean, if, and if you incentivize that and you have to show three or four improvements to get that incentivization, um, I could see a lot more um, improvements coming from something like that. Herkimer Community College has done a fantastic job of uh, formalizing course reviews across all programs. And uh, one, uh, I know they, they provide incentives, uh, monetary and or release time incentives. And so I shouldn't, probably shouldn't speak directly for them because, um, but, uh, the program uh, as I know it today um, is very successful because of the top-down alignment um, in, from the president all the way down to the adjunct instructor around 
the importance of course reviews.